Hello and welcome to Crop Science 6049. In our today's lesson, we are going to look at fruit and seed development and also we are going to look at seed structure. By the end of this lesson, you must be able to describe the structural changes that occur after fertilization, differentiate endospermous and non-endospermous seed development, and also to describe the internal and external parts of a seed. Now let's take a look at the structural changes that occur after fertilization in plants. The structural changes that occur after fertilization in plants are as follows. We have development of the endosperm, development of the embryo, and formation of the seed and fruit. Now let's take a look at the development of the endosperm. The formation of the endosperm is initiated by mitotic divisions of the primary endosperm. The formation of the endosperm occurs usually prior to the zygotic division. The reason why the endosperm forms first before the division of the zygote is that the endosperm will supply food to the developing embryo. Endosperm accumulates food reserves and functions as the nutritive tissue for the developing embryo. There are three main types of endosperm development in flowering plants, which are the nuclear type, the cellular type, and the helobio type. Let's take a look at the nuclear type first. In the nuclear type of endosperm development, only the nucleus is dividing, or karyokinesis, without cell wall formation and cytokinesis. The nuclei produced are free in the cytoplasm of the embryo sac, and they may remain free indefinitely or wall formation may take place later. In coconut, cell wall formation of endosperm is never found complete, and the coconut water is the endosperm. So what happens during the formation of the nuclear type of endosperm is that only the nucleus is dividing without the formation of cell walls. So there will be accumulation of nuclei inside the embryo cell. Next we have the cellular type. In this case, there is cytokinesis after each nuclear division of the endosperm nucleus. The endosperm thus is a cellular form from the very beginning because first and subsequent divisions are all accompanied by cell wall formation. For example, the white edible part of coconut is a cellular type of endosperm. So during the formation of the cellular type of endosperm, the primary endosperm divides and as it divides, cell walls form around each cell that is formed. Now let's take a look at the helobio type. It is an intermediate type between the nuclear and the cellular types. The first division is accompanied by cytokinesis, but the subsequent ones are free nuclei. It is most common in monocot plants. So during the formation of the helobio type of endosperm, there is a mixture of the cellular type and also the nuclear type. So the first cells that divide, they divide to form the, a nuclear type of an endosperm. The later divisions will form the cellular type of an endosperm. So there will be a mixture of nuclear type and cellular type. Now let's take a look at the development of the embryo. The embryo develops from the zygote. Patterns of embryo growth differ from plant to plant, but there is some generalization. The initial cell division of the zygote results in two cells, one of which will develop into the embryo and the other into the suspensor. The suspensor serves to maintain the anchorage or orientation of the embryo and to thrust it into the mass of the endosperm from which it derives nutrition. This embryo develops through the globe, heart, and torpedo stages, so-called because of their appearance. The two lobes of the heart stage develop into cotyledons, and in the cotyledonal stage, the embryo has developed the radical or root meristem. As the embryo grows, the endosperm is digested away. Its substance is used for the nutrition of the embryo. This process may continue without a pause, until no endosperm is left and all the residual material is transferred to cotyledons, as in bean seed. This seed is referred to as albuminous or non-endospermous seed. 
Alternatively, as in maize, the endosperm may remain in the seed until germination. This seed is referred to as albuminous or endospermous seed. For your own research, go and look at what parts of the seed makes up the embryo. Now let's take a look at the formation of the seed and the fruit. The tester of the seed develops from the integuments. It is a thin but tough protective layer. The micropyle remains a small pore in the tester through which oxygen and water will enter when the seed germinates. The final stage in the development of the seed involves the reduction in the water content of the seed from the normal levels for plant tissues. This greatly reduces the potential for metabolic activity and is an essential step in ensuring seed dormancy. While the seed develops, the ovary becomes a fruit. Its walls develop into a pericap. The remaining flower parts wither and die. Now let's take a look at the differences between the endospermic and non-endospermic seeds. In endospermic seed, endosperm is present, but in non-endospermic seed, endosperm is absent. In endospermic seed, food is not stored in cotyledons, but in non-endospermic seed, food is stored in cotyledons. In endospermic seed, the cotyledons are thin and papery, but in non-endospermic seed, the cotyledons are thick and fleshy. And the examples of endospermic seeds are castor and maize, and examples of non-endospermic seeds are pea, bean, and cucumber. Now let's take a look at the internal and external structure of a seed. First of all, we're going to look at the external structure of a leguminous focusing on the bean seed. And it consists of the following. It consists of the tester or the seed coat. The tester is the outer covering of the leguminous seed. It is usually very thin but tough and can be almost any color depending on the type of the legume and is partially impermeable to water. It prevents excessive loss of water from within the seed and serves as a barrier against the entry of parasites. Hard seed coats may cause dormancy, a condition which prevents germination when environmental conditions are not favorable for sustained growth of seedlings. Next we have the helum. The helum or scar on a bean is the site where the legume originally was attached to the pod of the plant. It is the navel of the bean and can be found on the surface of the tester. Next we have the micropyle. The micropyle is a small pore present above the helum. It is where water can enter and start the germination process. Now let's take a look at the internal structure of a leguminous seed or the bean seed. First of all, we have got cotyledons. Cotyledons are the two halves of the legume seed, covered and protected by the tester. The cotyledons provide the developing plant with nutrients and help sustain it until the roots begin to mature and are able to absorb sufficient nutrients to sustain the plant. As the nutrients stored in the cotyledons are used by the growing plant, they shrivel and dry out. Next we have the radical. The radical is one half of the embryo, which is situated between the cotyledons inside the tester. The radical is the first root produced by the seed. Once water reaches the embryo and begins the germination process, the radical pushes down through the micropyle and into the soil. The radical continues to grow and until a fully fledged root system has developed and is able to sustain the growing plant. The plomo is the second half of the embryo and produces the first leaves of the plant. After the radical breaks through the micropyle and begins to descend into the soil, the plumo swells, pushing up through the tester and soil until it reaches the sunlight. Next we have the hypocotyle. The hypocotyle is part of the stem between the cotyledons and the root. The hypocotyle follows the plumo and cotyledons up through the soil towards the sunlight. The epicotyle is the part of the stem above the cotyledons and below the plumo. As the bean seedlings develop, the epicotyle grows and elongates in a process known as phototropism, which means growing towards light. Next, we want to take a look at the external structure of a cereal seed, and we are looking at maize as an example. Maize grain may be whitish, yellow, violet, or red in color. It has a smooth and shiny surface. The grain is conical and flattened. 
It is attached to the cob by its narrow pointed end, which is surrounded loosely by a shallow husk. The broader end is roundish. Near the broader end, the upper flat surface contains a small papilla, which represents the remains of the style. The same side possesses a depressed whitish area. It is a central ridge which indicates the position of the underlying embryo axis. In the seed of cereals such as maize, the seed coat is membranous and generally fused with the fruit wall, called hull. It protects the contents of the seed. Now let's take a look at the internal structure of a cereal seed. And it consists of, first of all, the endosperm. The endosperm is bulky and it stores food. Generally, monocotyledonous seeds are endospermic, but some, as in orchids, are non-endospermic. Next, we have the aluron layer. It is a single layer of cells just inside the seed coat that surrounds the endosperm and the embryo. Upon germination, enzymes are secreted by the aluron. The enzymes degrade the stored carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. The products of which are absorbed by the scutellum and transported to developing embryo. Next, we want to look at the scutellum. The scutellum, meaning small shield, also refers to the equivalence of a thin cotyledon. It is very thin with high surface area and serves to absorb nutrients from the endosperm during germination. Next, we have the embryonal axis. The embryonic axis consists of three parts, the plumo, radical, and the hypocotyl. The portion of the embryo between the cotyledon attachment point and the radical is known as the hypocotyl. The embryonic axis terminates in a radical, which is the region from which the root will develop. Next, we have the coleopter. It is the conical protective sheath which encloses the plumo in a monocot seed. Next, we have the coleoriza. It is the undifferentiated sheath which encloses the radical and root cap in a monocot seed. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, additions and subtractions, please write them in the comment section. If you have benefited from this lesson, please click the like button.